Hi, I'm Kohei Tokunaga from NTT Corporation. And uh, yeah, I'm a maintainer of Builder Kit and a uh, reviewer of ContainerD. And uh, today I'm going to talk about BuildG, uh, an interactive debugger for Docker file. So first, let's get through the summary of this talk. Um, BuildG is an interactive debugger for Docker file. And uh, it provides interactive prompt for debugging Docker file with breakpoint. And uh, it also supports running a container on an arbitrary instruction and uh, deeply inspecting it. And uh, BuildLog also uh, integrated to IDEs like uh, VS Code, NeoVim, and Emacs. And uh, IDEs GUI-based debugging feature can be used for debugging Docker file. And this integration is achieved on DAP, which is debug adapter protocol supported by these IDEs. So first of all, uh, debugging Docker file is hard. Um, it's even more true if you write a large and complex Docker file. And uh, it's almost impossible to write a correct Docker file without cycles of uh, debugging and fixing. And uh, for inspecting the internal state of Docker file, yeah, you might modify it and uh, insert like a run ls, uh, run cat. But modifying Docker file sometimes can um, cause cache miss and uh, it requires relearning the Docker file again, and uh, this costs extra time. And uh, so the lack of tooling in Docker file it, and also makes uh, debugging harder. Um, interactive tools, even shell, um, cannot run, can, cannot use on Docker file, and debugging tools um, might be unavailable on lightweight images like BusyBox or Scratch. And uh, these issues uh, sometimes make uh, and like a debugging a five minute problem, take hours. Yes, and uh, one of the root cause of these uh, difficulties of debugging uh, of Docker file is a lack of interactive operation. Um, Docker file is typically executed as non-interactive and uh, atomic job. And uh, tools like Docker build uh, parses the Docker file and the schedules or instructions, and then uh, they are executed all at once uh, without providing interactive operations uh, for inspecting the Docker file. So, how can we interactively inspect Docker file for making debugging Docker file a lot easier? So here, BuildLG comes in, and uh, BuildLG is an interactive debugger for Docker file, and. Uh, it supports two types of UI for debugging Docker file. And the CLI provides an interactive prompt for debugging Docker file, and the GUI provides a rich UI for inspecting Docker file line by line, visually. And uh, this is integrated to IDEs like VS Code, Emacs, and Vim, and more. So you can use your favorite IDE for debugging Docker file. And it supports rootless execution. Uh, BuildG is implemented based on, based on BuildKit and leverages its features like a faster build by aggressive cache usage. So uh, first, let me introduce the CLI of BuildG. And it provides an interactive debugger prompt. And this provides commands used for debugging. And they include uh, ones for controlling execution and inspecting Docker file instructions, etc. And uh, this figure uh, shows an example of uh, usage of the prompt. Um, build g debug command starts a build, build uh, debugger prompt, and uh, you can debug this Docker file using commands like uh, break and continue. And uh, from the next slide, I will introduce some debugging commands uh, provided by BuildG. Uh, breakpoints uh, allows us to stop or break uh, the build at a specific line of Docker file. Um, on the stop to instruction, we can request further commands for deeply inspect the uh, uh, build's internal state. Uh, this command example shows that uh, we set a breakpoint at line 5 of Docker file and then uh, resumes the build. And uh, the build will run until it reaches uh, to line 5. And as shown in the example, BuildG shows 
the Docker file contents with marking the line where we stop. Uh, in this case, line five is marked. And uh, you can step by line, uh, line by line using a next command. In this example, uh, when your build breaks at line two, uh, you can use next command, uh, then the build resumes and uh, runs until line three. And uh, sometimes you want to launch a shell um, on an instruction to inspect the root file system in the e execution environment. Here you can use exec command. Um, this allows you to launch a shell uh, or other processes, um, including shell, on an arbitrary instruction. And in this example, we launch a shell on an instruction, uh, then it installs Figlet on the root file system, then run it. And uh, of course, instead of running Figlet, and you can do an arbitrary, arbitrary operation like uh, running ls command, uh, cat command, or debuggers, etc. So, yeah, Buildogy allows to use an arbitrary debugger image uh, when launching processes on an instruction. In build, lightweight images, like a busy box or something, are sometimes used. And uh, this is really great for minimizing the result image size, but sometimes lacks tools for debugging the build. So instead of uh, the base image of the stage, uh, you can use your own favorite image for inspecting the instruction. And uh, this allows you launching like a shells on an arbitrary instruction, even on scratch-based uh, stage. And uh, in this example, we specify uh, Ubuntu uh, as a debugger image, and uh, the build uses BZBox as the base image, but we can use Ubuntu instead when we debug it. And uh, the original, original BZBox root file system is mounted at the slash debug root directory, which is configurable. And uh, so you can still inspect the content uh, through that directory. And uh, BuildG cache is a result of each instruction. Uh, this helps speeding up second time debugging. As the uh, uh, Dockerfile development sometimes require multiple cycles of debugging and fixing. And uh, yeah, reusing the cache can help speeding up the iteration. As discussed later, uh, BuildG implemented uh, based on BuildKit. So this cache functionality leverages uh, BuildKit internally, of course. And uh, as shown in this uh, example, uh, BuildG prints the log message um, when the cache hits. Okay, so how does BuildG work? So BuildG is uh, based on BuildKit, as I mentioned. And a build kit is an image builder developed under Mobi project. And if you use like a Docker build, uh, new as an 18.09, and enable you enable uh, like a Docker build like called one environment variable, um, you always use build kit. And uh, it supports features for efficient builds, including uh, a concurrent multi-stage build and a remote cache, secret mounts, multi-arc, rootless, etc. So BuildG embeds BuildKit, so you don't need to run BuildKit on the node. Uh, BuildG also um, added some patches to BuildKit for allowing uh, hooking, hooking instructions. Okay, so, um, so how does BuildKit run instructions? Uh, this will be, yeah, this will need to be known um, to understand uh, how BuildG works. So BuildKit interprets Docker file as LLB, and LLB is the intermediate representation of Docker file. So as described in readme of BuildKit, LLB is to Docker file what LLVM IR is to see. So when building a Docker file, BuildKit converts it, the Docker file into LLB, and the LLB is a uh, LLB, LLB forms a dependency graph of build operations um, called OP. And uh, such operations, or OP, includes uh, like a file OP for file operations, like a copy instruction, and the exec OP for executing commands like a run instruction. And uh, in this slide, I, I describe an example of conversion from Docker file to LLB. And Docker file contains uh, three stages here. Uh, first stage uh, starts from BuildBox base image, and they create the file named uh, foo. And the second stage 
starts from Alpine base image and creates a file named bar. The third or final stage starts from scratch and copies foo and bar files from the above two stages into the final stage. And this Docker file is com converted to LLB as shown in the right graph. And this shows dependency of, dependencies of uh, each LLB operation like uh, exec OP and file OP. And uh, each operation corresponds to the instruction uh, in the source Docker file. And when build kit builds, builds it, um, it schedules and uh, executes these operations and, uh, as concurrently as possible. So, uh, yeah, so here, how is the debug functionality implemented in Build.g? So, uh, Build.g hooks each OP execution in Build.kit, and um, Build.g patches Build.kit to enable this, and uh, each LLB operation contains the location information of the corresponding instruction in the source Docker file. So, Build.g can use this information uh, for mapping each operation into the source Docker file. So when a user uh, requests a debug operation on a line in Docker file, uh, VLG converts it to the uh, LLV level operation uh, using the location mapping information. Now when you launch a shell on a Docker file instruction, VLG launches a container which reproduces, reproduces uh, the execution environment and root file system. And the Builder Kit supports a feature to run a container. And uh, this is provided through an API called New Container. Yeah, this is very great uh, Builder Kit feature recently added. And uh, Builder G leverages that API for creating a container based on the hook LLB operation. Um, Builder G passes the result fi root file system of the hooked LLB operation into the new container API. And uh, at the same time, Builder G gets uh, that OP's execution environment information from LLB and uh, passes it to the yeah, new container API as well. And yeah, Build.g supports root rootless execution, uh, so no, non-root user can run Build.g. And uh, in terms of uh, build kit, it supports rootless using a rootless kit, um, so we can run build kit in a new user namespace created and configured by rootless kit. And inside that namespace, uh, rootless build kit can run containers uh, for running the build. And Build.g takes the same approach with, uh, with a transparent UX. Um, when Build.g run by a non-root user, it automatically runs rootless kit and runs Build.g itself in a new user namespace created by rootless kit. Okay, so yeah, I think, uh, I think, um, yeah, it, it will be more um, easier to understand uh, if you I uh, show some demo about uh, this feature. So, uh, okay, let me show a demo about uh, debugging of Docker file. Okay, so. Yeah, I believe you can. See, see it. And uh, here, uh, I want to containerize this uh, very, very simple GoLang application and uh, uh, named uh, say hello. Uh, and uh, this brings just a hello world to standard out. And uh, I saved this file as a say hello.go and, uh, and I wrote a Docker file. And this Docker file is also simple to build the application that creates a runnable containerized application. The first stage, uh, the build, the first stage builds this application using go build command, and the second stage containerizes this application um, on scratch image. But, uh, but uh, as discussed later, uh, this Docker file contains something wrong. So uh, uh, I'll show build those features through debugging this Docker file. Okay, so uh, here I use very, very simple Docker file, but maybe you sometimes have more and more, more, and more complex uh, Docker file. So, okay, so. First of all, let's build it. Okay, so yeah, build itself succeeded, okay. So uh, here I want to run it. Uh, something like, hello world should be printed here, but um, it fails. Why? And uh, um, 
Yeah, the error message says that uh, there is no, say, hello binary, no search file or directory. Hmm, what's happening? So let's debug it using build.g. So you can, yeah, launch the debug station using build.g debug command. Uh, this is very, uh, yeah, easy to use. And, uh, okay, the build starts and uh, build proceeds until, yeah. Okay, the output says that uh, the build is now stops at line two. So you can show the source docker file using a list command. Um, and uh, according to the output of list, the go build, go build happens at line four as highlighted here. So, okay, let's deeply inspect this step first and uh, uh, check if the go binary is correctly created. And uh, here we can use break command and uh, um, to set the breakpoint, and I use, you can use the continue command to continue the build. Okay, um, here, uh, yeah, as you can see here, we use the break and the continue, so um, we are at line four. So let's check if this stage has a, say, hello binary. And uh, you can launch a shell on the root file system on this stage using exec command, as shown in this, uh, uh, this command, and uh, you can, and uh, yeah, here, according to the list command, uh, the, um, the, the final stage of build um, copies a um, say hello binary from slash out directory of the first stage. So here we need to create the binary um, at the slash out directory. So first let's inspect this uh, slash out directory. Okay, but slash out directory there is nothing, so it looks like something wrong happening. So where is the say hello binary? So here uh, we have the view, full view of the root file system. So we can directly find that file on the root file system using find. So here um, yeah, we ignore a slash proc directory, uh, which we are not interested in here. So, okay, we find the say hello binary at slash go. Mm, this is the default working directory of Golang image. Uh, the, bi the binary was created here because uh, we didn't specify the output, de destini output destination to the go build command actually. So let's see. Um, yeah, there is no output destination is specified in this Docker file. So, uh, so what we need to fix is uh, yeah, specifying the binary destination in this Docker file. Um, like this. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, we fixed the Docker file. So uh, go back to the terminal and uh, uh, reload this Docker file again and uh, inspect the final stage. Okay, uh, here reload command reloads the change the changed Docker file, so you can ensure that change is effective. Okay, so let's proceed the build until line four again and uh, ensure that the say hello binary is successfully created under slash out directory. Now you can directly exec. Um, that binary specify by specifying the path. Okay, it works. So we've all done, uh, finished the build G session. Okay, then the build this Docker file again. Okay, and uh, okay, build succeeded. So let's run it again. Okay, so yeah, here, yeah, um, finally, and we can successfully create it, uh, uh, successfully debug this Docker file, and uh, yeah, it now works successfully. Okay, um, we done the uh, okay, we done the demo. So second, um, let me introduce the um, GUI based debugging of Docker file on Build.g. Okay, maybe many of Many of you are interested in this topic, and uh, um, so Build.g provides not only CLI but also intuitive GUI for debugging Docker file. Uh, the GUI is integrated to integrated to IDEs like VS Code, Emacs, and NeoVim. And uh, Build.g newer than version 0.3 supports GUI-based debugging of Docker files. This is integrated to IDEs like VS Code, Emacs, and NeoVim. And uh, as similar as CLI, um, Build.g GU Vilogy's GUI mode uh, also provides basic debugging feature of Docker file as listed here. And uh, so, so I will introduce some uh, how these features look like. So we use VS Code here, but uh, GUI looks similar also on other IDEs as well. Um, when you start the debugger, 
IDE looks like this picture. Uh, there are some panels on each on the uh, each, each, each one describes the execution information of the Docker file. The, on the central panel, um, you can see the debugging Docker file, and the debug console shows the progress information of the Docker file. And uh, in Docker file, the line is highlighted with yellow is the current break position um, of the Docker file execution. And uh, you can set a breakpoint using an F9 key on the target line. And uh, this picture shows that uh, there is a breakpoint at line 6 uh, marked with a red field circle. And uh, you can resume the build using continue button uh, on the toolbar well, using F5. And uh, there are some, uh, some features on this uh, GUI. Like, uh, you can uh, also step line by line, step, set over, step over button on the toolbar or F10 key allows this. Uh, when you push, uh, uh, push that button, build resumes until the next line. And, uh, as, and uh, when the build stops again, the position of the yellow bar is also updated to the current break position. And you can launch a shell on an arbitrary instruction. Um, on the debugger console, uh, console repo, uh, you can use exec command. And uh, this launches a shell on the instruction um, of the current position. And uh, you can access to the shell via terminal panel. And uh, you can also bring your own debugger image by configuring launch.json config file. And uh, this helps you further inspection of uh, breaking instruction. So how the integration is implemented on uh, BuildG? Um, first of all, this integration is achieved uh, leveraging debug adapter protocol, or DAP, uh, supported by um, IDEs. And uh, DAP is a standard protocol between um, IDE and the debugger. And uh, this is proposed by Microsoft. And uh, this API allows an arbitrary debugger to integrate to IDE's GUI. And uh, IDE's, including VS Code, Emacs, and Vim, and provide a rich GUI for debugging programs and uh, um, use DAP to control, the to control the corresponding debugger. And so from debugger's perspective, um, the debugger can integrate to the variety of IDEs by just implementing DAP protocol based on its debugger feature. And I will know debuggers um, leverage DAP um, to integrate with IDEs like uh, Python, Node.js, and C Sharp. And uh, BuildG implements a DAP uh, for integrating with IDEs. So users can um, debug Docker file using the rich GUI provided by IDEs. So currently, BuildG is known to work on VS Code, Emacs, and Vim, but uh, it should work on other IDEs that support DAP. And uh, as shown in the figure, BuildG talks with IDEs via DAP, and uh, BuildG translate DAP operations into BuildG debug operations. So note that you need to you, you still need to install BuildG on your host um, to use this feature. So on VS Code, VS Code BuildG extension um, allows debugging Docker file. Uh, please refer to the VS Code BuildG repo for more details about the configuration. And uh, on Emacs, uh, DAP mode can be used to debug Docker file. And uh, to enable Docker file debugging, you need to configure DAP mode, um, and uh, the detailed configuration of DAP mode is also available on the BuildG repo as well. And uh, on NeoVim, an uh, NVim DAP enables uh, debug Docker file debugger, and uh, like other IDEs, to enable Docker file debugging, you need to configure NVim DAP, and uh, the configuration is also available on the BuildG repo as well. Okay, so before entering to the related works, um, let's do the demo again uh, um, on the VS Code. Um, okay, here, so we use the exactly the same uh, example on VS Code. Um, here, I want to, uh, okay, here I want to um, uh, containerize this simple Go application named Say Hello, that uh, prints just Hello World, um, as discussed uh, uh, previous demo, and that uh, and uh, yeah, I saved this file and say hello. Then this is a Docker file I wrote, and this is also the same uh, as I used in the previous demo. And uh, this Docker file uh, builds the application uh, on the first stage, 
And the second stage containerize uh, this uh, say hello binary into onto the scratch base image. But again, this contains uh, something wrong. So let's debug it using buildg on VS Code. So first of all, um, let's build this uh, uh, Docker file. And the build starts. OK, build succeeded. So I then run it. OK, um, build succeeded, but run, run failed again. And the error message says that uh, there is no say hero binary again. This is exactly the same, OK? And uh, so what's happening? Uh, let's debug it using buildg. And uh, on Docker file, uh, type F5 um, to launch the debugger. OK, debugger started here. And uh, OK, yellow bar shows that we are at line 2. And uh, the, go, the go build happens at line 4, uh, as I highlighted here. So let's deeply inspect this step and check if the go binary is correctly created. Then you can set a breakpoint just by clicking the panel. And uh, um, the continue button starts the build. OK, so we are at line 4. Um, and uh, let's check if the stage has say hello binary. And uh, you can launch a shell on the root file system of this stage using exec command in repo, OK, uh, as shown in the uh, debug console. And uh, then the shell uh, will launch at, uh, OK, the shell OK launched on the terminal. Then again, you can search the uh, say hello binary using uh, find uh, on the shell. But uh, before doing that, uh, let's check the there is nothing in the slash out directory. Uh, yeah, there is nothing. So we need say hello binary here, but uh, there is nothing. So uh, let's start say hello binary on this root file system using find command again. Okay, so uh, um, yeah, um, we found say hello binary at uh, slash slash go. So this is a default working directory of the Golang image. So uh, yeah, the the root cause of this. Uh, bug in this docker file is that we didn't specify the output destination of go build so what we need to fix here is yeah, like that we need we need dash o option uh, to this go build okay so um back to the debug console then restart this uh debug again okay restart button can easily restart this uh, build and uh and uh, yeah, inspect line four again. Okay, we are at line two, so continue it. Okay, we are at line four. So then ensure that uh, say hero binary is successfully created in the root, uh, in the out directory. So we can again directly execute uh, that binary on repo. Okay, hero world is printed, so it works. Uh, so okay, we've all done. So finish the build G session. Then, okay, ensure that uh, everything is fixed. Uh, so disconnect the debugger and uh, on terminal, yeah, um, as usual, we can build this Docker file and run it again. Docker build. And uh, yeah, uh, let's build this, uh, oops. Um, yeah, build this uh, context again. Okay, build succeeded, and I run it again. Okay, it works, and everything has been fixed. So, uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so there are some works in community and to support interactive debugging of Docker file as well. So I will introduce some related works here, and uh, okay, um, not CTL is docker compatible CLI of ContainerD, and uh, this is developed as a sub-project of ContainerD. And another CTL supports buildg-based build interactive debugger uh, since uh, version 0 0.20, and uh, you can use it via another CTL builder debug some command. And uh, as shown in the code example, uh, this launches a debugger prompt for the specified docker file context. Then it enables interactive debugging, uh, same as buildg. The Docker Buildx is a Docker CLI plugin for BuildKit. 
And uh, since version 0 0.9 provides a uh, monitor mode, um, as shown in the slide, uh, monitor mode allows uh, launching processes like shell on the build result. So this allows you inspecting the build result qu quickly. And uh, we are still working in progress towards uh, support for the complete debugger with breakpoints. So please try it and uh, uh, any kinds of feedbacks are very, very welcome. Okay, so BuildG is actually still in an early stage of development. So uh, there are some works to be done for maturing it. Um, we will also continue to work on the integration of the backup feature with tools in community, um, including builders like uh, BuildKit and desktop tools, runtimes, IDEs, etc. So finally, uh, this is a summary of this talk. Uh, BuildG is an interactive debugger of Dockerfile, and it provides interactive prompt for debugging Dockerfile with a breakpoint. And it also supports uh, running a container on an arbitrary instruction and uh, deeply inspecting it. And the BuildG is also integrated to IDEs like VS Code, NeoVim, and Emacs. So IDEs GUI-based uh, debugging feature can be used for debugging uh, Dockerfile. Um, this integration is achieved on DAP, uh, debug, the debug adapter protocol supported by these IDEs. So, yeah, I'm pretty straight, and uh, any kinds of feedbacks are very, very welcome. Thanks. So, I think we have uh, yeah, five minutes or something. So, uh, if you have any questions, um, please ask here and uh, we can use this mic. And any questions? Yes, please. Um, so do you necessarily need a Docker runtime for this or would it also work with, for example, Portman? Um, so so you, you mean, uh, do, do we need a run, container runtime on the host to use BuildG? Yeah, and does it need to be the normal Docker daemon, or can it also be some alternative like Portman? Um, yeah, actually, you can run BuildG um, without Docker. Um, you, you don't need Docker on the host, but you need, you need RunC, which is a uh, very, very low-level um, container runtime, and uh, BuildG depends on it. So, but uh, if you have Docker on your host, you should also have uh, RunC uh, installed on your host, so uh, BuildG should work um, on your host, but uh, yeah, um, but uh, you, you find, if you find any issues, um, yeah, feedbacks are very welcome. Okay, thank you. So anything else? We have a virtual question. Okay. Um, can I use build G with Padman in rootless mode context in some cases Docker with a daemon is disabled, especially in corporate environments when security is tight? Um, so, okay, so the question is, uh, um, yeah, can we, use, can we use build G on the, rootless, uh, on the host um, with uh, rootless Podman? Okay. Yeah, and actually, um, BuildG doesn't depend on the um, container, uh, like a container engine like a Podman or Docker. So, so um, you don't need a, a Docker or Podman installed on your host, but instead uh, you need RunC. And uh, if you um, care about the rootless, um, yeah, BuildG supports a rootless mode um, based on the rootless kit. So uh, yeah, if you are not allowed um, root privilege on your host, um, you can also run it uh, in a rootless mode as shown in this slide. Do you have any other questions? Okay, I think there is nothing. So uh, yeah, please try it and uh, feedbacks are always very welcome. Thank you.